Hey and welcome to a Planet Zoo educational experience. I'm Fran and I'm a community manager at Frontier and today we're at Shepworth Wildlife Park to take a look at the aardvarks and find out a little bit more about the Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity. I'm joined by Dean to learn a little bit more about the aardvarks. So, what can you tell us about these amazing creatures? They are amazing creatures. They are known as a key species. Now, by that I mean they have such a big impact on lots of other species in Africa, uh, plants included. So there's an aardvark cucumber, which they propagate, and they're probably the only animal that propagates this uh, plant. Uh, but they turn over soil all the time. Now, any animal that turns over soil has an impact on invertebrates and other mammals, birds, reptiles, uh, because they keep it also the soil itself and the plants that uh, grow in the soil as well. So they are known as a key species in Africa. Also, um, they eat uh, termite, termites. Okay. And uh, you can see these fantastic feet they have, big claws, and they rip down the termite mounds with these claws. And they're really strong animals as well, really big muscles they have on their bodies, so they can tear down their termite mounds quite easily. Oh. Uh, they dig out ants' nests as well. Now, if you're eating ants or termites, there's a chance you could get bitten. And obviously, these guys don't want to get bitten. That's why they have quite a hard skin, and their tongue is coated uh, with saliva, like ours, <laughs> but an extra coat on there. Uh, which helps to prevent any bites on the tongue because the tongue is the first thing that's going to go into the termite mound or the ant's nest. Oh wow, so you mentioned food, is there any other kind of food that they like to eat? Um, they do eat this uh, cucumber as I said earlier, uh, ants and termites as well. We give them uh, quite a mixed diet here in captivity, so they do get banana, they get sweet potato as well, we cook from that oh, wow. as well. Uh, normal potato, regular potato as well. Um, so they are um, herbivorous, they will eat insects, lots of insects there. They also have um, mints as well, <laughs> so we do kick, cook them some mints sometimes uh, in the microwave and they have that at the end of the day on a cold day as well. Oh, wow. um, so they would eat meat, uh, they do eat uh, vegetation as well, so they are um, uh, omnivorous. Yeah. Okay, well speaking of food, should we give them something to Absolutely, eat now? Absolutely, yes, we can Sounds give them some food now. Um, so we're going to feed the aardvarks now, and we've got these see-through globes, and the advantage of these is we'll be able to see the tongue going in and out of the globe there. Uh, they've got quite a long tongue on them. Um, we're going to try and give them one each. We've got Sophia, Elsie, and Indy here, so we're going to try and make sure they have one globe each. Okay. But sometimes Indy does get a bit impatient and want the food straight away, so we'll see how it goes. It might not be as easy as we think. Okay, <laughs> let's go for it, I guess. Okay, so we're going to get quite active now. Here, guys, our box. Come on. I say that. <laughs> Stay asleep. We, these guys sleep about 20 hours a day, as you can imagine. Here we go. Oh. Look, someone's stirring. There we are. Now, I do like them to stand up when they're having their food because they do tend to lay down and try and eat at the same time. <laughs> try and time. get them to be a bit more active. There we go. So you can see the tongue going in and out of this globe here. <laughs> Sophia is staying asleep, which is fair enough. Um, so you've got uh, Elsie, and I've got Indy here. Wow. No, sorry, the other way around. This is Elsie, that's Indy. And you can see the tongue coming in and out of the globe there. <laughs> now this tongue, very, very long. Obviously it's going into termite mounds, termite mounds and ant nests. Can you see how soft that nose is as well? The so nostril, soft. All the hairs around the nose, quite a sensitive nose. They do keep it on the ground quite a lot when they're in Africa, in the wild. Um, hunting out their uh, insects. Is that why they've got so much hair on their nose? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Also, they have a lot of hair on their bodies to keep all the dirt and sand, because these are diggers. Uh, okay. So most of their life they will be digging out their food. So the hairs help to uh, um, prevent any sort of dirt or sand uh, keep, uh, on their body. And the long eyelashes mm. as well, beautiful eyes they have. They really do. They have gorgeous eyes. Quite mm. jealous of those eyelashes. Right, so Sophia is waking up now. Oh no. <laughs> You've got another one over they there. They do oh. tend to fight over the food sometimes. So we've got another ball here, another globe. Let's see if she'll uh, see where this is. They haven't got great eyesight. <laughs> they rely heavily oh, no. on the on the hearing. Okay. And touch. She's laying down. This is really lazy. <laughs> Um, but they've got those fantastically large ears. 
and that helps to cool them down as well. Now they are nocturnal, they do come out a lot at night, they're not very active during the day. Just active for their food, yeah? Yeah, ab <laughs> active for their food and uh, quite robust bodies. They're, I liken them to like a cross between a pig and a dog. I can see the likeness for sure. They've got the temperament of a dog and uh, the body of a pig. I'm just going to leave that there, Sophia. Look, this is so lazy of her just... Now, we use these globes as a bit of enrichment. Okay. Um, and we can uh, move these around the enclosure. And uh, they have to actually do the work to get to the food. If I put it in a bowl all the time on the floor, it wouldn't be very interesting for them. So you have to use that long tongue to get to the food, which is really important. Um, Safira is our oldest girl. She's about 10 years old, so I don't mind so much. No, uh, I think We've that's got uh, Indy, who is our young boy. So he's only about four years old. And then Elsie here is about seven now. Oh, you've got your food over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the burrows they create in the wild, so they live in burrows in the wild, and the burrows they create for their young uh, get taken over by other animals. So like hyena, okay. jackal, will take over these burrows. And again, that's why they're a key species, because they're creating habitats for other animals. Oh, wow. So they will dig the burrows themselves, and the burrows will get used by other animals. Well, no wonder they're so sleepy during the day. Oh, actually. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> they do work hard, so uh, they do earn a sleep now and again. I think so. So they're not related closely to any other animal. Okay. And I heard quite an interesting fact from a visitor on the park, and I'm not quite sure if this is true, but a walrus is closer related to a domestic cat than an aardvark is to any other animal on the planet. Oh, wow! And although that seems quite extreme, aardvarks really haven't got close relations. And they're actually one of the only mammals who lose uh, teeth as they get older. Now, I know humans lose teeth as yeah, they get older, that's for a different reason. But yeah. uh, these guys have evolved to lose teeth as they get older because they don't actually need them. They're not chewing their food as much as other animals would do. So you can hear this noise, they always make quite okay. a noise when they're feeding. Um, people always liken them to pigs, like the snuffling the pigs make with the snout. I can see that. Um, they're very strong animals, so have you seen the tail? Quite yes, a strong, hard to miss. <laughs> yeah, absolutely long tail. And they use that as quite a support, so it's yeah. like a tripod. And um, they uh, use the back legs and the tail, and then they're able to lift themselves up and rip down with the uh, oh, wow. front legs. So when they're digging into those mounds, which are really well constructed, when you think of an ant's nest or a termite mound, they're so well constructed, these guys can take them down quite quickly. Not surprised. And they need to find quite a lot of food uh, in an evening. Uh, they Obviously, insects are full of protein. Now, it is said that if more humans ate uh, insects, <laughs> It might be good for the planet, which would be a good thing, because obviously it's a good protein source, but definitely for these guys, they need to find a lot of insects in the night. All that protein, no wonder they're so strong. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And they sort of go, uh, they spend most of the time asleep, then they're really, really active. And I guess in the wild, uh, when uh, a mother has a young underground, she will come up, have to find food, and then she'll go down and, and feed them. Obviously, she'll be lactating for the young, feeding them underground. Of course. Eventually, those youngsters will come up to the surface with her, and that is when she becomes uh, very defensive of them. So if there was a predator around and she wanted to defend her young, she could do so quite easily with those uh, fantastically strong claws at the front. Sadly, that's all we've got time for today, but thank you, Dean, for sharing a little bit more about these amazing aardvarks no, with us. I love talking about them. We hope you've enjoyed watching, and if you'd like to find out more about the Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity, then you can do so in the info box below, and let us know if you enjoyed this video in the comments.